Good morning, guys. Um, right. Oh, we are live. Just to explain how I do my lives, I'm talking here on my um, iPad, I'm live on YouTube. And then just over here on my phone, I'm live on Instagram. So if it ever feels like I'm not looking at you, it's because I'm trying to read all of the Instagram comments and all of the YouTube comments at the same time. And they're already going very quickly. Morning, Olivia. Um, very, very quickly. Uh, just behind me, I've got the lovely Hedy, uh, named after Hedy Lamar, helping me today. Right, so I put out lots and lots of videos yesterday specifically relating to each um, year group in um, like advice on what to do and um, I am now here to answer your questions so year 12's uh, first question year 12's are you going to be doing exams or not AS exams are cancelled exactly the same as all the other ones if your school has entered you then um, it will be treated exactly the same as all of the other ones. You obviously have the chance, if you're not happy with the grade, to um, sit in September or we sit at the end of year 13 or turn it into a full A level. Um, lots of people are asking, do you need to revise? This is a really good question. We do not know for sure how exactly the grades are going to be determined. We know that it's going to be teacher judgment based on a range of data and I know lots and lots of schools are saying that you still need to revise so you can submit evidence. Um, this is at the moment just a guess because we do not know what the exam boards are going to say. Now this is not the exam board's fault, it's not as if they're kind of like, oh well you know working 9 to 5 just going to go hang my feet up on a Friday. Um, it is because the schools um, and I assume the exam boards found out that this is happening at exactly the same point as everyone else did. So they were not prepared for it. Obviously, this is not an easy decision, um, the, how grades are going to be awarded. So they need do need to take time. They do need to um, take it seriously and think about things. It would be awful if they rushed out a decision and said, this is what we're going to do. Loads of teachers came back and had loads of these problems with it and then they had to change their mind a week later. So it is completely right that the exam boards um, in consultation with teachers unions and UCAS, there are lots of people who um, have a stake in this decision. It is completely right that they are taking their time to work out all of the details of this. So I do not expect the exam boards to rush out a decision, rush out their advice to teachers on how to make judgments on grades. So. The, I know it's a very long answer to a short question, should you still keep revising? Um, at the moment there are no exams, so there are no exams to revise for, um, no exams in May and June that is. Um, your teachers, if they are still setting you work and expecting it in, um, then they could, the exam boards could use it for evidence, but I don't see a situation where the exam boards are going to go and basically look at like a folder of evidence for every single student for every single um, exam in the country. I don't see that happening, um, but I could be wrong. Evidence might be used for kind of like um, where you appeal the decision, where you appeal a grade, um, but we don't really know. So are predicted grades going to be used? Another question. Partly, now I say partly, this is my best guess because again, teach judgment hasn't been uh, clarified exactly what this means. The exam board says it's going to be based on a range of data. So I'm guessing that is going to be partly looking at predicted grades, that's partly going to be looking at how you're doing in class or were doing in class. So topic tests, any mock results that you have. If you haven't already done your mock results, if you haven't already done your mocks, don't worry, um, I mean, they can't penalise you for not having done mocks. Um, teachers are, we have been setting predicted grades for years. Um, predicted grades, target grades, some of that data is based on um, the, the SATs you sat, if you sat them, in uh, you, when you were 11 at the end of Key Stage 2. 
um, and from that it's a very setting grade boundaries is a very very complicated process it's not just like a standard normal distribution look at the key stage 2 data they predict where you're going to be at, um, at the end of Q stage four, and they can basically have a rough guess of what the, the grade distributions are going to look like, um, and they will use some of that data. Now, they have said that the pattern of results is going to be the same as before. So it is not as if teachers are all gonna turn around and give you nines, because that's not gonna happen. There is going to be some level of moderation with the exam boards taking into account the fact that you know some people are going to have to get ones and threes and obviously there are going to be some people who get nines so we don't know yet what about private candidates lots of people are asking about private candidates uh blue comedy yes i would actually recommend private candidates to just keep advising and assume that you guys are going to be sitting exams in september um, I know this is a rubbish situation, but it is a rubbish situation for the entire world at the moment. Um, unless the exam boards come out and say something different about private candidates um, when they release what they're going to do, I'm guessing since you don't necessarily have teacher judgment or um, mock grades or anything like that if you've been um, homeschooling or doing it independently, that... Um, I'm guessing September. When will schools open, Eloise? Good question. I do not see schools opening after Easter. Um, I, uh, my husband is a microbiologist. Um, if you've watched any of my other videos, I get daily doom updates. It's delightful, my house. I once called my parents to give them a daily doom update and they hung up on me, calling me a prophet of doom. And that was about two weeks ago when I was trying to convince them not to leave the house. Um, so things are going to get worse before they get better. Lots of people are going to die. Please don't leave the house. Um, it's not, we're not at zombie apocalypse levels, but the more social distancing we can do, the more lives we're going to save. So um, even if you think you're going to the park with all your friends because chances are that you will be okay other people won't be okay so i'm now waffling um can we do our exams in november so the reason uh sorry i missed the name these are going really really quickly um the reason they were asking about november is that's because when maths and english resits are um the statement that was released yesterday said there will be a chance to do the exams in september or in summer 2021. Now I assume the summer 2021 was aimed at year 13 students who um, are missing out on UCAS places um, because of this. Um, I kind of like, I, the impression that I got was that that's, that half of the sentiment was aimed at um, year 13 students and September will be more aimed at year 11 students. Guys, these comments are strolling so quickly, I will do my best. Um, unconditional offers for sixth form and um, universities. The government has asked colleges to be considerate. So, um, in colleges, universities want to fill places. They don't want to have empty places because if they have empty places, then they don't make money. So, I'm guessing they're just going to be using the grades that you get given um, by your teachers, the teacher adjusted grades. Um, and use those and they would be asked by the government to be considerate about this but that is not a legal requirement so it is really going to vary on um, a case by case basis. Do you, I think colleges will make people do standardised testing? When you start sixth form, um, quite a lot of like, when you, so when you start high school, um, when you start secondary school in year seven, you may remember way back then, you have to do things called CATS which is basically standardised testing and a lot of sixth form places do the same. In the, like, the first few days, um, there are, there's large amounts of data that teachers get and see and we can use um, things. Uh, what was the online course you suggested us to do? So if you are in year 11 
and you are fairly sure that you're going to be happy with your grades or when they come out up before the end of July, you are happy with your grades, you then have a long, long period of time with nothing to do, potentially being stuck inside the house. So there are two types of online courses that you can do. I have been making um, what I call summer starts courses. These are up on my website. Um, these are paid courses, but um, they are 50% off at the moment, so they are five pounds. Um, so summer start for A-level maths is up and ready. Chemistry and biology, definitely a bit more formatting. Obviously I wasn't expecting this, so they're not ready now because I wasn't expecting anyone to use them until August. Um, and my summer start courses are kind of like an in-between, like the harder topics in um, GCSE and some of the easier topics in A-level and I've just taught them and that's it. Other courses that you could do are things called MIG, so Massive Open Online Courses. Um, the website that I've done these with is called FutureLearn and they're just free online courses where you can go and learn stuff. This is a really, really good thing for you to spend your time doing because learning is good. Um, and if you do some of these MOOCs, you can, select most of the time, the course is free to do, the lectures are free to sit, um, but if you want to get like a certificate at the end, then you have to pay to get the certificate, and then you can use the certificate, say, in your um, personal statement when you're applying to university. And this is a really good opportunity to, like, start doing things that will really really boost your personal statement so whether in year 10 11 12 and you have a lot of spare time go and do something that will boost your personal statement do i think adjustment will be cancelled that is a good question that i hadn't thought about until now now we do not know what ucas is going to do um we, we, we haven't had a statement from UCAS yet, um, but when they announce a statement, there are going to be um, there are going to be spare spaces. Um, An adjustment is where if you get better grades than the the offer that you've accepted, so you have to um, achieve and exceed the grades. I know this is really complicated. I've made much better longer videos about this, but. Um, Chances are there will be a few adjustment places around. Um, chances are there will be a few clearing places around, but probably not as many as we've seen in previous years because um, just because I imagine people are going to get their firm offers, but I do not know that for sure. Year 13, should you still be doing the work? I mean, Year 13, it's a slightly different situation to year 11 because I'm assuming in year 13 you will be wanting to start university in September or October. So resitting in um, September might not actually do you any good. So it really does determine whether you um, think that the grades you're going to be given are going to be grades that you are happy with or grades that you are not happy with. And if you think that you're going to not be happy with the grades, then I would expect that you will then become a year 14 student and basically reset year 13, which I know is not fair. Um, when do we get results? Thank you, Dylan. They will be ready by the end of July. There is no actual date. It is not clear whether all the results will be released at the same time or whether like it'll be on a first come first serve basis so if the um say school a got all of our teacher adjustment results in at the beginning of the period for getting them in and then school b got them in at the end of the period for getting them in maybe once they've moderated um maybe one school will get them sooner i don't think that'll happen because generally um all of the grades need to be in so that um, the exam boards can check that it does fit a similar pattern to other years. So I imagine they will all go out on the same day, um, but that date has not actually been announced yet. Um, uh, da, 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 right, sorry, these are going so quickly. What grades will be given? All grades will be given. So there will be ones given and there will be nines given. It's not as if they're not going to give out ones or they're not going to give out nines because of this type of situation. 
the results that are given will fit a similar pattern to previous years. So there will be ones, there will be nines. If you are in a situation, especially for GCSE, English and Maths, where your predicted grades are three, your mock results are three, you've been working at a three the whole way through, you can probably expect to be given a three by your teacher. And then you can spend the summer preparing to resit that exam in September and then maybe in November again. So for some of you, this is gonna be just um, a chance to do more revision while only focusing on maybe one or two subjects. Um, can we just keep them on our predicted grades? Some people cheated on mocks. That is a good question, but it went through really quickly, so I didn't see who it was from. Um, it is going to be based on a range of data. It is not You are not just going to be given your mock results. You are not just going to be given your predicted results. Um, it is going to be based on a range of data. So, um, and the exam boards, I imagine there's going to be some form of moderation involved in this, um, checking that it does actually fit the pattern of expected results. Will the EPQ deadline be delayed? I'm really sorry, I have absolutely no idea. Level two, further, further maths. Um, uh, if you've done no mocks and you've got no predicted grades for it, um, if it was self-taught and you've got no teacher assessments for it, then it might just be treated the same as a private candidate. Private students resitting, um, again, if you've got no basis for a teacher judgment, then it might be sitting in exams in September. Um, the exam boards could come out and completely contradict me on this. As soon as I know anything, um, you will know something. Um, yes. Um, are IGCCs cancelled ones that are sat outside of the UK? That is going to be determined on a country by country basis. Would the grade boundaries be low in September? So setting grade boundaries is really really complicated it's not as if they're going to lower all the grade boundaries and everyone's going to get higher grades a four sat last year a four given now as a, a teacher judgment grade and a four in september are all equal fours so it's not as if the exams in september are going to be harder or the grade boundaries are going to be lower um, we cannot make any judgment about grade boundaries until all the exams are sat. So that's an impossible question to answer. Um, do I have any idea about the international GCSEs? Exams in this country are cancelled because the schools are shut. So if you're sitting international GCSEs at school in this country, you can assume that they are cancelled. Your school might completely contradict me, the exam boards might completely contradict me, but based on the best information that I have got at the moment, I believe that international exams sat in the UK are cancelled. In Spain, I'm afraid I don't know anything about the exam sat in Spain at the moment. I can't really go so going so quickly. Will you still have a results day? That's a good question. Um, I don't know whether your results are going to be emailed to you, whether they're going to be sent to you in the post, um, or whether it's going to be exactly the same process when they get sent to the schools and you go to school and pick up an envelope. Now, exams are going to be, the results coming out before the end of July, fingers crossed we will be through this by the end of July so we can start socialising again. Um, AS exams, yep, yeah, AS exams are also cancelled. Imagine GCSEs come back. I don't think that they're uncancelled the May June exams. I really cannot see that um, happening. When do the teachers have to tell the exam boards our grades by? Lisi, that is a good question. A good question that I do not know the answer to. Mainly because the exam boards haven't told teachers what to do, how to do it, or when to do it by yet. Um, what about BTEX? I'm assuming that BTEX and coursework are now being treated um, exactly the same way as all other things. Because you cannot go into school to do your coursework, because you cannot go into school to do your practicals, um, that you will be given a, a grade based on teacher judgment. If um, your school is still sending work, 
I mean, this is this is really tricky. If the example was turned around and say we need a folder of evidence to back up your teacher adjusted grade for every single student, then the work that the school is sending you at the moment is going to be useful. It is going to be valuable, but we do not know what what the examples are going to say. So I can't really give you any advice on that. Can you repeat years? Yes, you can repeat years. It is not simple, it is not easy. Um, if you are in um, a secondary school that only goes up to year 11, it is unlikely that they will have space for you to, to go back a year and repeat it in that situation. It is more likely you'll have to go to your local six on college and reset all of your GCSEs there. Um, but I know a word that you're probably sick of at the moment, these are completely unprecedented times. We have literally no idea what is going to happen. So yes, you can repeat the year, but it will be different and it might not be easy. Um, should I start revising course subjects and focus on coursework? We don't know whether coursework is going to be needed anymore because the exam boards haven't told us um, haven't told us that yet. Um, marking coursework, coursework BTECs from now on might be suspended um, exactly the same way that teaching and GCSEs and A levels have, and um, your grades might be given on um, teacher judgment as well. But again. Until the um, um, until we know more, I can't give you a sensible answer to that. Can teachers lower your predicted grades? I see absolutely no reason why any teacher would do that. Um, teaching is incredibly hard, and you only do teaching because you love it and you love teaching. Um, so there is no benefit to any teacher anywhere to give you a deliberately lower grade than you are um, than you deserve. Um, somebody moves schools and the teacher doesn't know them. This is an incredibly hard situation. Um, there are going to be lots of students in that situation. You know, especially for like the subjects I do this for, science and maths, where there are shortages of teachers all over the country. Some of you might be in a situation where for maths you've had a cover teacher for the entire year or a rotation of cover teachers and they don't know you, so teacher judgment is purely going to be based on data. Um, and in that situation I can only suggest that you wait until the exam grades come out, then you think about appealing. Uh, no, you cannot reset your SATs, I'm sorry. You pay for your exams, what is going to happen to your money? I'm really sorry, I don't know. When do I think the exam boards will say what they are doing? I think they will wait until they have a clear plan in place and I think that it will be a well thought through plan and it will be a balanced plan and I don't think that they should rush out their decisions under pressure um, because literally the worst thing they could do would be to announce a plan have teachers point out every single issue with that plan and then a week later re-announce the plan. So I personally, and I know it might be frustrating, but honestly, you guys would rather wait until a proper plan was in place and you wouldn't want anyone to rush out a plan that wasn't well thought through. Um, so I know it might be a little bit frustrating that we have to wait to get this information, but I do believe that we're waiting for the right reasons because um, um, we, we do want a proper, well thought out plan in place. Are resets free? No. Um, so if you want to reset your grades um, and November um, resets for English and Maths, then you do have to pay for them. However, it is not clear if you're going to have to pay for September exams and then who will pay for these September exams. Um, because they are, the exams are expensive to sit and if you want to reset every single paper for every single exam that is actually going to be a large amount of money. If you are in a school that only goes up to year 11 and you have left, um, that school probably isn't going to pay for you to reset your exams in September because 
you're not a student at that school anymore. Um, so, I, yeah, that's very complicated. Jade, was exam cancellation a good idea? I'm going to say yes. Um, I'm going to say yes, and then I'm going to say that this completely devastated me, large numbers of people, that I've literally been crying myself to sleep every single night, mainly because um, without an exam season, I can't afford to pay my mortgage. So yes, cancelling the exams was a good idea. Lots of people are suffering for this, but it has been done to save tens, if not hundreds of thousands of people's lives. So yes, it was a good idea to cancel the exams. Um, year 12 uni applications. Yep, that's a good question. Um, uni applications are based on predicted grades from your teachers. So you are still going to get predicted grades to put on your university applications. Um, but there is going to be a lot of variation between those grades and um, what you actually get, partly because they won't have the um, mock exams that you probably would have been doing after Easter, um, the end of year 12 exams to do that, and you're basically going to have to teach yourself a whole term of um, A-level content, um, which is going to be hard. Uh, what happens if you don't have SATs? Um, other data will be used. And uh, do you, I think, mm, year 12 mocks, maybe, maybe not, really does depend on whether we go back to school. Um, I don't think we'll be going back to school after Easter, May half term, maybe we'll be going back to school and then it will be on a school by school basis because mocks are internal school exams and um, they are, are set by the school, not by anyone else. What is happening on results day? We don't know um, because we don't know when results day is or how results will be delivered. Um, Daniel, thank you so much for supporting me. Um, it is going to be incredibly hard few months for me um, and if I want primary kitten to survive in any format then any help is appreciated. Um, admissions exams in the summer, so the UCAT and the BMAT, I imagine they're probably just going to be pushed back um, until later. Should we finish coursework? At the moment I'm going to say do what your school does until we hear different from the exam rules. Are year 12s going to be advantaged with the full A levels? Yes you are because you are going to be teaching yourself a term's worth of content. So yes i'm sorry um do i recommend doing coursework at the moment just do what your school says until we hear otherwise will teachers be able to discuss our final grades mm, i don't see how that would be ethical i don't see how teachers discussing your grades with you i, I don't see how that'd be ethical um kira thank you so much again all the support is appreciated um this is a really good time for you guys to be reading books. Um, I've put a list of books um, for Virgin Chemistry over on my website. So if you ever go and buy anything from Amazon, if you just go and click through to the Amazon affiliate link, it doesn't matter, you don't have to buy the book. You can buy anything you want from Amazon, just as long as you visit Amazon by clicking through from the, the book recommendations on my website, then I get like a tiny percentage, like literally pennies. Um, but everything helps to keep this going um right i feel like i'm starting to waffle now um i don't feel like i'm at the point where i'm adding any new information or any useful information and if you want any more information then go and watch the videos that i put out last night um i will be like as soon as new information comes to me i will be putting more out um what i'm gonna go downstairs and plan now is basically a series of lessons. So these are predominantly going to be aimed at year 10 and year 12 students. GCSE Guru and Daniel, thank you both so very, very much. Literally, um, any support at the moment is appreciated. Um, I'm going to go yeah, plan a series of year 10 and uh, year 12 lessons. 
based on my best judgment as to where I think you should be at this time in the year. So we're going to be doing um, Unit 4 Biology and kind of like the end of algebra for GCSE Maths and then kind of like basically the where I think you would be at the end of year 10 and the end of year 12. So what lessons you're missing and it would be kind of like, look, this is a link to my video on this, this is a link to some exam questions, you know, go to 2019 AQA paper and do question 4. Um, uh, and then kind of like, you know, here are the workbook questions. Um, so I have workbooks on my website. Thousands and thousands of questions. I think the maths workbooks were like 249, except they're 50% off at the moment. So I will be pointing you towards some of my paid resources, but literally they are not very much at all. Um, this, this situation, this time is really really going to show you the difference between um it's really going to bring out economic disparity in this country so people there are going to be people who are going to be trying to teach themselves their GCSE while being responsible for the majority of the childcare in the family and sharing the budget with several siblings and potentially having to care for relatives as well and there are going to be people who are going to have private tutors um, online tutors, if you can afford them, will help you get through this situation. Um, and I think that is the most unfair thing about this, that some people are really going to struggle and some people will have their economic backing to basically carry on life as normal and get a load of online tutors and uh, be fine. Um, I really am waffling now. Okay, I have to stop this. I'm going to go downstairs and plan a load of lessons. Um, I will put them up on my website. There's going to be my lessons and then Lewis from Physics Online. I'm going to leave him to do the GCSE um, and A-level Physics and I will do Maths, GCSE Biology and Chemistry, A-level Biology and Chemistry and A-level Maths as well. Um, Right, properly waffling now. That's quite impressive. I've been talking pretty much constantly for 32 minutes now, and I definitely deserve a coffee. I've got that kind of like, I mean, you shouldn't know this because you are way too young to be drinking as much coffee as I do, but I am not sleeping because I am incredibly stressed about everything. And then I have to wake up and drink large volumes of coffee to be able to get through the day. So I've got that kind of like, really tired head but with a slight buzzy shaking of coffee. I just want to show you my nails if I just hold them up. These are my social lockdown nails because with nude paints they can just grow out and hopefully nobody will notice. Anyway let's try and find some happy things in every single day um, and yeah bye guys.